السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Dear students, welcome back uh, This is the second virtual class of English language vocabulary In this class we are going to cover the next four units uh, The first one is English language words After we are done with this unit we are going to go straight into the next three So today we are going to talk about first of all English language words English language words Of course, the first title says parts of a speech. Parts of a speech. What are parts of a speech? Parts of a speech are the different components of a language. They are the different components of a language. Or the different classes into which language is divided. So any language is divided into different components, into, into different classes. In English, I mean, which is the case here, we have different parts of a speech. We have nouns, adjectives, adverbs, proverbs, and this stuff. It says we have parts of a speech, noun, e.g., ch, information, happiness, verbs. I mean, these are nouns. We have verbs like uh, choose, till, complain, eat, go, drink, swim, and etc. We have adjectives, e.g., happy, tall, dangerous. We have adverbs, slowly, carefully, often, and this is tough. We have prepositions, in, at, on. We have pronouns, me, you, him, we, it, and the like. And uh, last but not least, we have articles like the definite article, the, and the indefinite article, a, and an. Okay, so I, I think these are simply the uh, components or the parts of a speech of English language. These are the components or the different classes into which language is divided. Uh, let's move to section B. We have special terms. We have special terms. In special terms, we have some important terms that we have to know as learners of English language. We have uncountable noun, a noun which has no plural form and cannot be used with the indefinite article, like information. We cannot say informations. No, this is uncountable. I mean, this, this is the you. You means uncountable. Uncountable. Okay, uncountable. Okay, next we have plural Noun, a plural noun, a noun which only has a plural form and can't be used with the indefinite article, like trousers. Trousers, we cannot say trousers is. No, it is, we can say trousers are. Okay, so let's move to the next point. Infinitive, the base form of a verb, uh, such as to work, to stop, to be. I mean, we have... I mean, two infinitive and we have bare infinitive. Two infinitive to go, to speak, to learn, to dance, blah, 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 blah. And we have the bare infinitive. Bare means without anything. Okay? So bare infinitive like go, eat, swim, without to. Phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs, as the name implies, it is a verb plus a preposition or a verb plus an adverb. Phrasal verb. Okay? Here we have a verb plus adverb and or a preposition. So we have verb plus adverb or verb plus a preposition, this is a phrasal verb. By the way, the verb itself, or the meaning of the verb, is different from the meaning of the phrasal verb. So the preposition that follows the verb makes the meaning different, okay? Gives a different meaning. So if we say, for example, go up, go down, go off, okay? So the meaning here is different from one example into another. Uh, we have examples, turn on, verb plus adverb, um, look after, uh, verb plus preposition, give up, verb plus adverb, put up with, verb, adverb, and the preposition, put up with. So put up with, endure, uh, which means endure, verb, adverb, and the preposition. Okay, so idiom, what is an idiom? In English, an idiom is... Uh, a group of words whose meaning is different from the meaning of the individual words. This is an idiom. Again, an idiom is a group of words whose meaning is different from the individual meaning of the words, which is different from the meaning of the individual words. This is an idiom. We have many examples actually in English. Okay, uh, An idiom, a group of words with a meaning that is different from the individual words, as I have just put it, uh, such as never mind, hang on, a shortcut, keep an eye on something. Okay, these are different idioms of English. 
Next point, we have transitive verb and intransitive verb. A transitive verb is a verb that takes an object. Uh, an intransitive verb is a verb that doesn't take an object. And we have many more examples in English language. The first example for a transitive verb, a verb which needs a direct object. Police caught the man. Police caught the man. The man is the direct object of the verb. Coat uh, of the verb coat. Intransitive verb. Intransitive verb. Okay? Intransitive verb. The intransitive verb is a verb which doesn't need a direct object. It doesn't take a direct object. Okay? The box arrived on time. There is no direct object after arrive. Arrive. She smiled. He died. Okay? She smiled. He died. Okay? We, we, I mean, these verbs doesn't, these verbs don't take objects or, I mean, direct objects after them. Uh, next point, we have word building. Word building. Okay? Um, in word building, uh, in the word uncomfortable, in the word uncomfortable, by the way, it is pronounced uncomfortable, not comfortable or something like that. We say uncomfortable, comfortable, comfortable, okay? In the word uncomfortable, un is a prefix. Comfort is a root or a stem. Again, let's get back to the word prefix. What is a prefix? A prefix is a letter or two letters or a group of letters which are added to the beginning of the word and which necessarily uh, change or changes the meaning of the word, especially adjectives. Okay? Again, a prefix. And we have, we have prefixes and suffixes. So a prefix is a, a letter, is a group of letters that are added to the beginning of the word and necessarily change or changes the meaning of the word. However, we have suffixes. Suffixes, these are letter, a letter, letters that are added. I mean, groups of letters that are added to the end. They are added to the end of the word. They are added to the end of the word. So, in the word uncomfortable, we have different sections here. We have different segments. We have un, comfort, and, comfort and able. Where is the root? Where is the stem? Comfort is the stem. Comfort. The word comfort. Unhappy. Like unhappy. Happy is the root uh, or the stem. Uncomfortable, here, un is a prefix. Comfortable, we cannot say comfortable, we say comfort. Comfort is the stem or the root, and able is the suffix. Is the suffix. Okay? So, un is a prefix, comfortable, oh sorry, comfort is a root, and able is a suffix. So, any word, any word, in English or any other language here, especially specifically speaking, we are talking about English language. We have, I mean, different segments or different sections of words. We can say we have the root, the stem, which is the origin of the, let me say, the, the, the root of the word. We have sometimes uh, uh, prefixes and we have suffixes, okay? Other common prefixes include re, in, this, like, appear, disappear. In, uh, I mean, Side, inside, uh, complete, incomplete, re, re, reha, uh, redo, and this stuff. Common prefixes include iti, mint, i've or eve, okay? Uh, iti, mint, employ, employment, okay? And this stuff. Many words also have a synonym or synonyms. Many words also have synonyms. The synonym is another meaning of the word, okay? Synonym, uh, okay? Uh, synonyms. The opposite is antonyms or the opposite. Synonyms and antonyms. Many words also have synonyms which are words with the same meaning. So synonyms are words with the same meaning. For example, big is a synonym of large. The opposite is a small. The opposite is small. Okay, so this is so far so good. Let's go to after word building. After word building, we have um, we have uh, pronunciation. We have pronunciation. Uh, we all know that uh, sometimes we have different pronunciations uh, of the same word. Dictionaries show the pronunciation of a word using phonetic symbols. Dictionaries show the pronunciation of a word using phonetic symbols. Uh -huh. This is important to focus on. Phonetic symbol. What is a phonetic symbol? What is a phonetic symbol? These are special symbols 
that represent the speech sounds of the language. They are special symbols that represent the speech sounds of the language. So they are phonetic symbols, and we have to here focus a little bit on the, uh, on the phonetic symbols which are always there in dictionaries. I mean, dictionaries actually provide the pronunciation of a word. So if you would like, for example, to have a good mastery over how to pronounce different words, you just go to what is there next to the word in the dictionary. You can find between two slashes, I mean, the different, the different phonetic symbols of any word, uh, and that's going to be, I mean, uh, easy for you step by step, okay? E.g., book. This is, I think it's over there, yeah? This symbol, this phonetic symbol is uh, book. You, t you see these two slashes, this is book, this is phonetic symbol, okay? Before, before, it's before, be, for, or, okay? So before, cinema, cinema. These are phonetic symbols that are represented or that are shown between the two, I mean, the two slashes and so on. So these are phonetic symbols. You can find plenty of diagrams of phonetic symbols on the internet if, I mean, if you would like to add or if you would like to stretch your knowledge about, I mean, pronunciation. Each word contains one or more syllables. Uh-huh. Book has one syllable. Before has two syllables. Let's have a look. Book, book, book. It's one syllable. Or it is monosyllabic, by the way. We say it is a monosyllabic word. It is a monosyllabic word. Or one syllable word. And words that have more than one syllable, for example, two, we can say it is two-syllable word, two-syllable word, hyphenated, okay? So any word in English, any word has uh, one syllable or more than one syllable. Some words have two syllables, some other words have three syllables and the like, okay? So each word contains one or more syllables. Book has one syllable, as you see the B, book, book. Next, B, before, B, for, before, before. So it has two syllables. Okay, cinema, cinema has three syllables, cinema, cinema, cinema has three syllables, okay, you see between the two brackets, cinema, education, Educa by the way, it is education, 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 so we have four syllables here in this case, so education has four syllables, okay, for a pronunciation, for pronunciation, um, it is important to know which syllable has the main stress. But before going, uh, talking about uh, the stress here, stress or word stress, I'd like to give you a definition of the syllable. So a syllable is the beat or the sound unit. A syllable is the sound unit. It is the sound unit, okay? The sound unit of the words, okay? So a syllable, sound units or sound beats into which words are divided, into which words are divided. So how we can say how many sound, I mean, units there are in a word, okay? Education, education, for example, take education as an example. Education, I pronounce it as education, but if we would like to dissect it into different syllables, it becomes education, education. So it has four syllables, it has four. So a syllable is the sound unit or sound beat into which a word is divided, into which a word is divided, okay? So let's get back to the pronunciation. For pronunciation, it is important to know which syllable has the main stress. We have, I mean, uh, I mean, we, in, in, in each word we have a main stress. We have the main stress, the main stress, okay? The main stress. On before, it is the second syllable. It is the second, what is this, what is this stress? Here, what is stress? What is stress? Okay? Uh, stress is the emphasis. Stress is the emphasis that is given or put on a certain syllable of a word. Again, stress is this, the emphasis that is given to a specific syllable uh, 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 of a specific word. Okay? It is this, the emphasis. Like before, before, before. Okay, so the stress here is on the second part, on the second part, before, okay, before, like before, okay, before, 
before. So it focuses, it falls on the second part of the verb, or, or on the second syllable, okay? Because before uh, has got two uh, syllables, and here the stress, the emphasis, the focus is on the second part of the word, which is the second syllable, okay? So again, for pronunciation, it is important to know which syllable has the main stress. By the way, um, stress changes the meaning. Stress changes the meaning. And sometimes it changes the part of a speech of a word. Like, for example, we can say uh, project, project, uh, comment, comment, present, present. So sometimes we have a verb, and in the other case, we have a noun. So present and present. Present is a verb. Present is a noun. Project, project. So stress is very important because it changes. To some extent, I mean, in, in, in most cases, it changes the meaning. And in other cases, it changes the part of speech of a word. The part of speech of a word. So uh, on before, it is the second syllable. Before, for, you see? It is underlined, okay? On cinema, it is the first, cinema, cinema. So it is on the first. And on education, education, it is, it, it, it's very clear. Education, it's education, K, K, education. It is the third, edu, K, edu, K. So it is education. No dictionaries mark stress in different ways. If we would like to know the, where the stress is in the dictionary, sometimes we have it in bold, so the part which is stressed or which has the main stress or, yes, it is the main stress, uh, it is written in bold. It is written or it is typed in bold. Some others use, some other dictionaries use apostrophe. Some other dictionaries use apostrophe. So dictionaries mark stress in different ways. In bold, return. You see, turn, return. So the stress in the second part. Or uh, a uh, apostrophe. This is apostrophe. This is apostrophe. Before the main syllable, return. Make sure you understand how the dictionary shows it. Okay? Okay, this is done. Let's move to E. Punctuation. Punctuation marks. We have full stop or period. We have a comma. We have brackets. We have hyphen. And we have question mark. We have question mark. Uh, I think it's a good idea, actually, to do some of the exercises, it's a good idea to do some of the exercises in uh, the uh, right-hand page, on the right-hand page, okay? We have an exercise here, uh, three point, let's go to three point, uh, four point three. Four point three, four point three, we have, look at the underlined verbs in these sentences, which are transitive which are intransitive. It's very easy. She broke her leg. I got up at 7.30. We arrived late. Four, take off your jacket. Five, she doesn't like Chinese food. And six, uh, he told me to sit down. Okay? In the first example, she broke. We cannot see she broke and stop. She broke, so this is transitive. Transitive means it takes an object. Okay? Two, I got up at 7.30. I got up at 7.30. Okay? We can say, I got up. I got up early. I got up early. I got up early. Okay? So it is intransitive. Number three, we arrived late. We arrived late. We can say, she arrived. And that's it. So it is intransitive. Uh, we go to four. Four, uh, take off your jacket. We cannot say take off. Take off what? Take off your hat, take off your shoes, take off your jacket. So it takes an object, so it is transitive. And five, she doesn't like Chinese food. It is transitive. And last but not least, she told me to sit down. She told me to sit down. Here, sit down is intransitive. Intransitive. Let's go to 4.4. How many syllables are there in each of the words in the box? We would like to check the number of syllables uh, in these words, we have English, noun, informal, education, understand, adjective, decide, pronunciation, before, opposite, preposition, and comfortable. And comfortable. Okay? Let's go one by one. English. 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 We have two syllables. We have two syllables. Okay. 
we have two syllables. Uh, noun, we have one syllable, noun, noun. You see, the sound beat, the sound beat or the sound, let me say, the sound unit, the sound unit into which the word is divided, okay? So, noun, one unit, one sound beat, one syllable, okay? Informal, informal. Let's count down, let's count, okay? Informal, informal, informal. So we have three, we have three, okay? Informal, we have three, we have three syllables. Education, as we have just put it, as we have just said it, we have education for education, education, education. We have four syllables. Understand, understand. We have three, under, understand. Understand, we have three. Adjective, we have three. Adjective, adjective. We have three syllables, okay? Decide, 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 okay? Decide. If I ask you about the, the, the stress in each one, English, English, it's cut clear, okay? It's clear cut. English, it's, the stress is on the first one. As for the noun, uh, uh, informal, informal, okay? Informal, inform, in for informal, the second. Education, the third, K, education, education. Uh, understand, understand, okay? It's the last, it is stan, understand, the third, understand. For adjective, Okay, let's move. Decide, decide, okay? Decide, decide, sigh. So it is on the second, on the second. Pronunciation, it's pronunciate, pronunciation, pronunciation. So it is on uh, CA, pronunciation, pronunciation, five, pronunciation, okay? Ciation, so the fourth, okay? Uh, before the second, before, we have two syllables here, before. Opposite, we have three, opposite, opposite, opposite. Some people say that, some people say that uh, uh, we can know the number of syllables in a word uh, by the number of vowel sounds in the word, okay? Prepositions, we have four syllables, and comfortable, we have three syllables, we have three syllables, okay? So I think we are done with this uh, unit, and inshallah, in the second uh, meeting, I'm going to talk about problems with pronunciation. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.